What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Adobe Live. Big high five just for you, right in the microphone. <laughs> boom, boom. I'm back here with John Olson. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Mm -hmm. For sure. This is uh, John's second day here working on some really cool, what would you say, branding, experience, photo retouching? Yeah, I like all those words together. Okay. Some, some campaign assets, some mm -hmm. Photoshop, composites, yes. and, you know, some shapes. Yes, as you can see, we brought our uh, props back. But before Couldn't we jump, them. yeah, no, they literally brought themselves back. Uh, before we jump into that, I want to remind you all that this week is an awesome Photoshop week, uh, focusing on kind of dusting off your portfolio. So we're going to take some time to walk through John's portfolio today, uh, probably after the chat and win, talk about uh, what kind of projects you might want to put in a graphic design branding portfolio, mm -hmm. what kind of imagery and assets you want to include. Uh, and then after us, Life of AVAX is coming on with Paul to do some more photo compositing magic. Uh, so make sure you stick around for that. If you want to join us in chat, make sure you're logged in on be.net slash live. We can see everyone chatting so far. We've got Anna, Josh, Tiago, hey. Dune, Christina. Oh, Dune, I was just messaging with you today. So cool. Really good to see you all. And I actually see a name that I want to talk about really quickly. Uh, I want to mention the winner of the challenge yesterday was Josh Quintana. Josh, congrats. I'm sure you already know. Uh, but this was actually shown during our stream, so I'm glad that you won, and I hope our feedback was really helpful for you. Uh, we also wanted to give an honorary runner-up to Ryan Doran's Ooh. submission. Isn't this cool? Very fractal yeah. and literally cool. Love it. So if you don't know what the challenge is for today, make sure you go over here, check out the challenge tab. It is making a superhero composite of so yourself. Fun. Maybe you could take a screenshot of us and make us superheroes. Mm -hmm. Who knows? This is a perfect time to screenshot <laughs> if you would like. Yes. <laughs> You're like the WTF superhero. <laughs> WTF man. <laughs> That's awesome. So we have about an hour and a half until we're going to be looking at submissions. Can't wait. They looked really cool last stream. I'm excited to see. Uh, oh, Josh said that he did change his submission based off of our feedback. Oh, awesome. Yay. Cool. So the winner, there will be one winner today, and they will go home with a free year of Creative Cloud. And we're going to be doing a chat and win in about 30 minutes to give away 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Very cool. Love them. Have you ever done uh, Sticker Mule before? No, but I really want to. Yeah, I see Rheingeist, awesome. which is a Cincinnati brewery. That's so cool. Wow. Ohio love. Ohio love. Always got to mention it. Um, cool. So, John, I'm going to let you introduce yourself one mo again mm -hmm. in case people weren't here yesterday. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, Hi. I'm still John. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from New York, and I work in branding, advertising, full service creative. And I have a pretty diverse background from illustration mm -hmm. to branding to a bunch of stuff. Yeah, all the things, pretty much. And you said that at your agency, uh, you kind of get to get your hands on everything. Yeah, different aspects. which I, is kind of what I like about design. Mm -hmm. um, I work in a small place that does a lot of different things. So we can be doing a video one day, we could be doing branding one day, mm -hmm. could be making an app the next day, and that yeah. that kind of keeps me excited and engaged. Yeah, or ripping 300 posters one day. That has definitely been part of my <laughs> workflow. <laughs> Cool. So we're actually going to take a peek at your portfolio, probably, like I said, after the chat and win, and we can talk Great. more about that. But Josh says, yes, impressive portfolio. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, we have a lot of friends in chat joining from many different places around the world. I see we have a friend from Pakistan. Uh, someone else is very excited about New York. So oh, let us Caroline. know. <laughs> hey, Caroline. Uh, so if you want to let us know where you're watching from, let us know. We're in San Francisco, if that helps. Uh, cool. So maybe we can talk about what you did yesterday. Yeah, it sounds good. Let yesterday. me open up Photoshop and I've got some layers. Lots of layers. So this is the base image we started with yesterday. Mm -hmm. And when we left, this is where we had gotten. Wow, even that's a big jump. Yeah, it was, we did a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, there were a couple like little masking issues that still need to be done and some level adjustments and a couple color tweaks. So I did a little bit last night mm -hmm. and there oh. we go. So now fully masked out, kind of leveled out the reds and the blues mm -hmm. and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Cool, can you go back and forth between those yeah, two layers absolutely. real quick? Okay. Other than that little hand jumping. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
awesome. And you change like the vibrancy and the blue and yeah. the background. So it's mostly just the same, the same La mask that I had mm -hmm. um, tightened up and then playing with kind of hue and saturation on top of those, those masks for the, the shapes. Awesome. And we talked a lot yesterday about how this actual composition isn't really conducive for social, but you like to work this way because then you can kind of cookie yeah, cut out of there. I, I think something like this I'm excited about and I'd like it to be more than a social post. Yes. Um, so I never want to like, especially Instagram, square format, cool, mm -hmm. uh, but it's limiting if that's what you're thinking about the final piece as. So yes. this is something that I would like to be maybe a full campaign uh, and most of those touch points would probably be horizontal somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so we can kind of play if we crop this uh, yeah. with negative space or maybe doing a crop or moving some things around, but I like to keep things big and then formatting them for touch points after. Awesome. And will you remind us what this actual campaign is for? It's for a glove company. Yeah, right? it's for a glove company in New York called Wing and Weft and they do custom gloves for like film and TV and mm -hmm. Broadway. Um, like a super cool weird little industry that I didn't know was real. So niche. I, I love it. Yeah. Man, and we talked yesterday about how there is this kind of fantastical element because it is for like Broadway and film. Yeah. So these gloves are almost like actors. Little little visual own. metaphor for mm -hmm. what they do. Yeah, cool. So we're going to be working on another composition today, maybe two more. Yeah, we'll see how, how aggressive we get in our timeline. Okay, <laughs> let's get aggressive. Get aggressive. Be aggressive. Be aggressive <laughs> with design only. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so we have a lot of images, and this just like super quick. These gloves uh, have these little pearls on them that mm -hmm. I think are super cool, and I spray painted these little wooden balls to like try and mirror the pearls. Oh. And initially, I was like, "Oh, maybe it's like picking things up because groundbreaking. They're gloves it's picking a hand. things up." Wow. But as we started like doing the shoot, I think we found some more interesting things just through playing. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the best thing that happens in my design work at least is like, just see what happens and then look at stuff afterwards. Yeah. So I shot a lot of things where I'm picking things up and you know, we could do that. That's cool. I've got yeah. enough assets for it. Maybe <laughs> that's another day. But uh, I then started thinking about, um, have you seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? Oh. Course. With Oogie Boogie when mm -hmm. you like rip the seam and he's just like made of bugs. <laughs> uh, for some reason I was like maybe it's made of like pearls. <laughs> I was imagining the glove just like exploding and all these uh, pop out. Yeah. I only had three so <laughs> I shot Ooh. a bunch of different placements and I stuffed the glove with one of these little triangles and some tissue paper to keep it up. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then tried to shoot the other end and um, maybe we can Let's composite put it all those together. things. Yeah. Yes. So that's what I think we're gonna do instead. Not Amazing. one of my original ideas, but I think better than yeah. the ideas I had. Whoa, I didn't know the compositing was gonna get this crazy today. I mean, maybe I'm being too ambitious, so <laughs> bear with me guys. Yeah, it's all part of the process. Let's close this one. Cool. Bam. I love that cut of the glove, how it like kind of comes off the arm a little bit. It reminds me of like the Huntsman from Snow White. Right? The Huntsman. I kind of want to wear it every day. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's New York. What? <laughs> yeah. This makes sense, right? What do you want from me? Uh, Josh says that this reminds him of mimes. Some very Ooh. fancy mimes. Very classy. Mm hmm. Cool. So you're using Bridge. Yeah. I, I know um, very little about Bridge except that it's easy to preview raw files in yeah. it. And it has some basic color adjustment stuff that mm -hmm. I use. But other than that, um, it's there. Yep. <laughs> it's holding all your photos and that's what matters. What's up, Ellison? Good to see you. Jan Eric, good to see you as always. Good to see your name. I should say I can't literally see you. Uh, Leonardo, Tim, as always. Hello, Betty. Awesome. Ellison is sending us a hug from Brazil. Ooh, wow. All People the way. from everywhere. Quite literally, yeah. That's so cool. Ooh, Joseph from Littleton, Colorado. Very nice. So you're making a selection. Yeah, so just again, Ooh. like yesterday, rough, 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 comping these things together. So <laughs> I brought this in, made it a smart object, uh -huh. and I'm just gonna like, very gingerly place it wow. where I think it's gonna go. And like, 
when you shoot things again with a single light source mm -hmm. and think about angles while you're shooting, like the camera was on a fixed tripod, um, you don't need to do that much work mm -hmm. because it's kind of almost there already. Right, so what hotkey are you using to delete from the layer mask or to mask? Yeah, so I, I have my mask on mm -hmm. and then I am, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, so I'm doing Command Delete, which cool. is taking my bottom color here. Oh, filling it with black. Command Option would be the top. So I always have black and white, and then I just kind of go back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely had to look down when you asked me that because <laughs> You're I like wait what it's am like I muscle doing? memory. I uh -huh. don't remember the yes. names of them unless I really pay attention. Yeah, I still have a hard time remembering which one you want to fill it with, black or white, if you want the mask to like appear or disappear. You'll so. also notice that I go back and forth a yeah. lot because I don't know and <laughs> I just, just hit buttons both. until it feels right. <laughs> hit buttons until it does the it's thing the, you want. It's like the opposite of a technical tutorial. Yeah. I don't know, I just hit buttons. This is just an honest workflow. Yeah, I mean, it's how it goes. Uh, Caroline wants to know, do you use a stylus or do you, uh, does your hand cramp? Great <laughs> question. Um, I work in a really, really weird way and all my coworkers are confused by it. Um, I either use a mouse or sometimes I just use a trackpad, which is insane it's and crazy. I understand that. Um, but I, I've never felt super comfortable with the stylus mm -hmm. and so I don't really use one. Yeah. We have like Cintiqs at work, which are beautiful and I don't use them. You just let them <laughs> gather dust. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sad. It's even crazier because you have the model of MacBook where it's like the little tiny trackpad and you have really big hands. So it's like even, it's almost comical, uh -huh. <laughs> but it works for you. It's like a Chris Farley, like big guy in a little coat. Uh -huh. Yeah. Big hands and a little trackpad. <laughs> Brian says, polygonal lasso tool, baby. Oh my God, I'm so happy that you're also a fan. Mm -hmm. I thought I was just gonna get so much, <laughs> so much backlash. No, no, no. It's just so fast. Yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah, and you were doing a workflow yesterday where you're using uh, feathering with your selections. Mm -hmm. So even if your selection is a little bit jagged, that feather really helps out. Ooh, Josh, that's a good point. You can use your iPad Pro with an Astro Pad or Luna Display to make mm. your uh, Photoshop appear on it. Or you can just wait for Photoshop on the iPad, which is a thing. Is that a thing? It is a thing. Yeah, wow. it was uh, snuck a couple months ago and it will be coming in 2019. That's super cool. Mm-hmm. Never would have thunk it. Yeah, Tim, that's a good point. You wouldn't use polygonal lasso tool for selecting smooth shapes, but for quick selections, why not? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, Betty says if you start on the trackpad, it becomes quite uh, accurate and easy. I mean, it, it might just be like mother of necessity type thing, you mm -hmm. know, like because I think when I started in school, I was in a lot of weird random places around campus maybe and just had a trackpad and <laughs> had to do it and probably was too dumb to realize that there are better ways. <laughs> and then once you get comfortable, yeah, it's kind of just what you're using. Seriously, like as a child, when you're kind of learning how to use a computer, you're not starting with a stylus or like anything. You're just using your trackpad or a mouse. So why would you know? You know? So I'm interested in these weird places around campus you're talking about. <laughs> because we had the same campus. We did. So cool. We were talking about how we wanted to get uh, our alma mater, CCID, to retweet us because <laughs> we're alumni doing cool work and they did it. It was amazing. Thanks, CCID. Love you. Thanks for my education. Thanks for my education. <laughs> <laughs> Don't owe you any more money. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, art school, you know, you know how it goes. Damn. <laughs> cool. So you just composited two gloves together. Yeah, it I think it's, it's already starting to look like a thing maybe. This mm -hmm. angle could maybe be a bit better, but we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to see if I can get maybe some more of these little guys to make it feel like I didn't only own three, <laughs> <laughs> three wooden balls. We need literally a million. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just fill the whole thing. <laughs> Love it. I love how you took the time to actually spray paint wooden balls. And it's got two coats of spray paint, <gasps> a off-white and then a gloss because I wanted it to shine. Going above and beyond. You no, know, and also in a New York City studio apartment. Let me <laughs> tell you, everyone loves when you spray paint mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially your brain loves and that. Oh yeah, 
really, really healthy and great for you. <laughs> Man. I remember, like, at CCAD, a lot of people would, like, spray paint or do, like, fixative Get in their that for... dorm rooms. Yeah. It's really not good for you. Make sure you ventilate, guys. Yeah. If you're in school, I know you think you're invincible, but... You ain't. You're not. It's really bad for Are you. Them. Were you an all-nighter kind of person? Did you pull a lot of all-nighters? I tried not to, mm -hmm. but um, it definitely happened. Yeah? And How I many think... times would you say? Oh, God. Often? Not maybe, like, once a month. Okay. Which is probably more than a normal human being does an all-nighter, but... Um, but it was on a full moon, so you were extra strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's Mercury, how it works. Mercury retrograde. I don't know much yes. about astrology. It is guys. Aries season. It's the spring equinox today. I don't know what any of this means, but I support it. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> uh, so you were not really an all-nighter kind of person, at least not often. Not really. Um, mm. But I definitely was a consistent late night person. Oh. I don't function well without any sleep. Yeah. Professionally, I've done it a few times. When necessary. When necessary, but it kind of like kills me the next day. Um, so I try to work late, but not uh, forever. Okay, I see. Get your work done, but don't let your work done yep. you. Yep. <laughs> mm. I didn't know where you were going, but I, I didn't like either. it. I Can support you tell? It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Kendall, what's up? My coworker and my friend. Ah! <laughs> Hi. So she says, ooh, spray fixative in the little dorm room. Good memories and a few lost brain cells. <laughs> You're like, good memories and maybe more memories that are not there. Yes. Cause... Good memories, maybe? <laughs> Who's to say? I don't remember them. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Shoaib says that you are so jolly and they enjoy your tutorials. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Jolly, that. that's such a nice compliment. I mean, this is really fun. Good. And the community is great, too. I love the comments we're getting. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome. Yeah, really great questions. Uh, Prince is back with another great question. Talking about resolution, um, when something is going to be used like on a screen digitally versus when it's printed. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips? How much like pixels per inch, dots per inch kind of stuff? Um, I, I think it's always, if you can, I mean, we live in an age of storage, right? Like mm -hmm. I remember when I would try and buy like flash drives that had the most minuscule storage now, but like it's to like me it was a big deal. Gigabytes. <laughs> I luckily we're at a point now where like hard drives are getting better and better and they're mm -hmm. cheaper and cheaper. So I would always rather hedge on too big than too small. Mm -hmm. Because even, you know, like three hundred DPI is print, um, but like three hundred DPI of what? What are you doing with it? I've had to print things at work like on outdoor billboards that are yeah. like I don't even understand how to format those files. And so in those cases, I have the biggest thing I can, and then I end up talking to a printer and trying to figure out what I should be doing. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on what kind of a project. But again, the same thing I'm doing for this, if you're, if you're doing something online, um, it's better to have bigger than smaller. And okay. screens are getting better. And True. Platforms are getting better. I remember when Behance upped the file size you could put there, and then everyone's portfolio was like mm -hmm. tiny because you could, you know, fix the files. And I went back into my PSDs and re-exported bigger images for projects on Luckily Behance. you could. Yeah, because I saved I saved a, a bigger size. Yes. Um, so I think it's always good to capture as much actual data as you can mm -hmm. and keep it if possible. Yeah, totally agree. I remember when I was an intern. At Adobe, we were making illustrations for like uh, the hero images of tutorials, and then HD screens kind of started to become a thing. So we literally needed like two times the dimensions, and we're mm -hmm. like, "Do we have this, or do we have to remake it?" I don't know. I think we usually had it on hand. And that way, what is it? 4K things now, yeah. and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's oh, um, like too much detail for me. I don't want to see all those pixels. And I mean, also don't don't like become paralyzed by that because mm -hmm. at some point, like. You can make anything work. You can make a low res image look better if you really take the time yep. to a certain extent. Yep. Um, but just rather be safe than sorry, I think. Totally agree. Let us know if that answers your question, Prince. It may not have at all. <laughs> <laughs> you may have been looking for a specific size, and I was like, well. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess the rule of thumb is kind of like 300 is good for print. 300 DPI for print. 
Um, like 72. 72, for but low for risk. web, but I think 150 is better mm -hmm. to just to just hedge your bets because screens are getting bigger and bigger yes. and platforms keep changing. So mm -hmm. I would do 150 for 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 web. Yeah, smart. But that might not be the official answer. But it's John's answer. Give it answer. three years and we'll see. I'm gonna be right. Yeah, <laughs> you heard it here first. Hashtag John Nelson is right. <laughs> <dot com. laughs> Yep, the full thing, that's oh it. Oh boy, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, no, you're perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Flips my ponytail, happily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rasim is saying that there are new measures of sizes, like choke bites, like a gigabyte, terabyte. Whoa, like I don't even know bite. what that is. That sounds made up, Rasim. I hope it's real though, <laughs> and I'm, I'm down for it. Hmm. Yeah, Michael, even SSDs or uh, solid state drives are really cheap now, so they're way better than yeah. hard drives. I remember at school, I had the hard drive that has a little fan in it, so it's not an SSD, and it broke. And one of my professors was like, why do you have a fan? It's going to break. That's so funny. You're right, Adam. You're right. Uh, I mean, we, we didn't go to school that far apart, no. you know, a couple years. But mm -hmm. when I was in school, yeah, solid states were so expensive, you would never think about having one, no. you would try and like work somewhere that had one and make mm -hmm. them pay for it. Yeah, and then I just upgraded my MacBook, like my personal one, and put a solid state in it, and it was like not expensive at all, but it made my 10-year-old MacBook like brand new. It was great. Oh, it's a joke. Okay, so choke bites are uh, not real. Oh. I get it because it's like a bite and you're choking on it because it's so big. Okay. Rasim. You're taking you're taking advantage of the fact that we're doing so many things at once. Mm -hmm. You're letting that slip by. Didn't even catch that. I'm not usually that gullible. <laughs> I might be actually. <laughs> like, oh really? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, Lauren, if you do 300 for digital, that should be fine. Oh, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Well, like so, the stuff I'm doing now, I'm keeping these giant, and they're they're probably just going to be digital. Mm -hmm. But. I'd like them not to be maybe, or maybe I go back in later and make more stuff out of it. Yeah. Um, it really depends on the structure of your project and like what you know and what you're guessing on. Yeah, right. Just try and outsmart stupid is what I usually say. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You're the stupid one, like you're talking about yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Make, make, make yourself in like four months really happy mm -hmm. that you thought ahead. Yes. Totally. What's up, Huxel? Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, chat, I want to remind you that we will be having a chat and win in six minutes. After that, we're going to talk about John's portfolio a little bit. I think John has a really great example of a really sleek um, branding and graphic design portfolio. So there's a lot of thought that goes into what kind of assets you place in your projects, and I, we'll talk about that a, a little bit. And then we're also doing a challenge. So if you were tuning into Jesus's stream beforehand, uh, he was working on a lot of compositing. So we're challenging you to also composite. You can take a photo of yourself or someone else and make them into a superhero. So if you wanna check out some examples of what we mean, go over here to the challenge tab and click on the WooBox link and you'll see the submissions from earlier. I love this challenge, it sounds so fun. Really cool, so I wanna show an example. I think Tim made this, but uh, it's Iceman, Ice Gus. So this is, this is Gus, this is our community manager. That's so and good. And this is him as a superhero, it's really, not that, not that far of a stretch, I would say. <laughs> so nice job, Tim, if this was you. Who knows? It's I a mean, mystery. also a challenge that I would probably super struggle at because like people and hair and mm -hmm. textures and yes. I am very much a, a, a shapes and drawing type guy if you can't tell by the type of assets <laughs> I wanted to bring for this. But exactly. what a fun challenge to yeah. try. Yeah, there's some really awesome new masking tools for hair, especially if you use the selected mask window uh, when you are selecting. It's really good at grabbing individual hair, so check that out. That's so cool. I feel like I need to watch a Jesus mm -hmm. tutorial Need that. to watch a Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David says, I vote John gets his own spin-off series. Yeah! Time Is with this John. Like, a, like a buddy comedy with you and me? <gasps> I'd Ooh, be way into that. Yeah, or a podcast, a visual podcast. With, <laughs> like with that's a TV two. show. Yeah. It's called a visual podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm making it a thing. <laughs> a lot of people do that. They like will record their podcast and then post it on YouTube and then get like ad revenue from really? that. Really? Like, oh, free money, huh? Okay. What's up, Marty? 
Gilmar. Hello, Robbie. Robbie likes Iceman's pants. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Pretty cool. Kroll, yes, we're gonna be giving away stickers in about three minutes. So make sure you're logged in on Behance, be.net slash live is where we are right now. And if you're watching on YouTube, come on over to Behance because that's the chat we can see. Um, that is where we're gonna be picking someone to win the 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Very cool. The show could be called Jolly and Cat <laughs> because you're jolly. It's I'll official. Take it. <laughs> Mattia from Italy. Hello. Good to see you. Oh, yeah, Michael. It might be called a vodcast. I like that. Video mm. on demand podcast. Mm. <laughs> Tim says, Is it free money if you have to put in the work to record the podcast? I think that's just called work. <laughs> Tim, I think it's see? called diversifying I think we're in a gig income. economy so you have to make yourself yeah. think you're actually getting stuff for free when yeah. really you're just working <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see if you're gonna get paid for just the podcast and like the listens you get and like your network I don't know I think he's got a point point. <laughs> and then you post it on YouTube and you get the ad revenue you're like just help me sleep at night yeah let's come on <laughs> give me a break clearly I'm not a podcaster this is cool so you are grabbing the little balls and yes. kind of just making a little mountain. Trying to see, I mean, because there, I wasn't really stacking them, so I'm hoping that maybe with some little shadows, we mm -hmm. can get it to line up to look like what I want. Yeah. But we're gonna do it very rough first, and then see what we can do. I think there's another one in here. That, ooh, look at that shadow. <laughs> Somewhere in here. Look at that weird shadow. Nice. Love it. Yeah, Tim, that's true. You are actually getting free stuff today if you win the Sticker Mule Challenge. Mm -mm. That's no strings attached, free stuff. Thank you, Sticker Mule. The best. What's up, Jennifer? Good to see you, Alan, hello. I'm seeing some names I've never seen before. It's really good to have you all here. Bernice from Puerto Rico, very cool. Wow. Listen to all those clicks. Click, click, click. That's because I was using the trackpad just uh -huh. there. <laughs> I went back. Uh -huh. <laughs> No smart trackpad for you. You click, click, click. <laughs> <laughs> now you know all my secrets. Just know your workflow. It's okay. All right. I feel like I need some here in the front. Maybe mm -hmm. this yeah. is like silly little composition stuff, but composition is so important. So important. How dare you say it's silly? <laughs> <laughs> it is king. Well, this, is, this is where it stops almost being about Photoshop and it's like the same thing you'd be doing if you had a piece of paper and a pencil. You're just thinking about what goes where. Yes, that's actually a really great point because a lot of people wonder or ask us, like, how do I get started with making anything like art? Like, how do I start with Photoshop, blah, blah, blah. And it's like you know, on paper or pencil or Photoshop, like it's all the same. It's yeah. the same tenants, same design principles. Yeah, and then you just, you know, you have tools to go way further in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, you, maybe you want to be a little bit limited in the beginning so you're not so overwhelmed. I know when I jump into Photoshop and I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do, I don't think my work turns out as strong because I kind of get spread too thin. I try out too many different things. Whereas if I'm just with pencil and paper, it's going to be strong. It's a simple idea executed in the same way. You yeah, know? What's up, Amir? Ernestas, good to see you. All right, everyone, you can see. We have some explosions happening behind us. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I wish that was the sound that fireworks actually made. Just like, <laughs> Just someone saying boom. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> uh, everyone, we're gonna be doing a chat and win, so make sure you answer the question when John asks you the question, and when you do, you'll be entered to win 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. So John, what are we gonna ask them today? Um, well, how about, I, I want I know you guys are making your own superheroes, but like, other than yourself, who's your favorite superhero? Mm. Answer that, we'll be back in a minute. We have some answers. We have Iron Man, Prince like Spider-Man. Someone says my mom. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, Doctor Strange. 
Ant Man, Wolverine. Like Paul Rudd, Ant Man. Yeah, which Ant Man? Yeah, Paul Rudd's a good guy. Good guy, Paul. Yeah, right. <laughs> Batman, Deadpool. Do you have a favorite? Um, when I was little, I was super into the Ninja Turtles. <gasps> Ooh. So like the '90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, I, I support show. all of their in, like iterations, but mm -hmm. like classic '90s. Awesome. Do you have a favorite turtle? I like Leonardo. Okay, see the green. Oh, they're all green. Yeah, he's the green one. <laughs> <laughs> I also the had the toy. I had the toy where he had like one of them was undercover and had a briefcase, and you open it up, and there's a sticker of pizza on the inside. <laughs> he's like, would you like some? <laughs> All right, Nathan, you are the winner. Congrats, Nathan Bates. You have just won 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Amazing. Uh, we'll be in touch with you with how you can get those. And chat, do not be too dismayed if you didn't win because we do have an offer for you. If you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, you can get 10 free stickers for just $1 which is super cool. Like imagine if you're going to a convention and you want something a little bit more creative to hand out besides business cards, get some stickers, hand them out. Everyone loves them. People love stickers Clearly. so much. Yeah. Yes. I was, I've been, uh, I said yesterday, I've been doing a lot of like campus career events mm -hmm. and we had stickers and people went wild for it. Were they these stickers? The Be Real? They might be these Be Real stickers here. <laughs> they just might, they just might. Super cool. And it's really easy to upload to Sticker Mule. Um, they help you out with the formatting and walk you through all of the template stuff. So you really can't. Highly recommend. Um, I want to talk more about superheroes because yeah. people are still talking about them. And now, like Superwoman. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Wonder Woman. Nice. I really like X Men, like as an entire universe. All the mutants, I think, are really cool. I was to say which one is is your favorite, because mm. there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I used to watch the, uh, it was like the animated show, but it was kind of old. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who my favorite characters are. I've always liked Storm. She's like very mysterious and kind of eccentric. She's pretty cool. Rogue is interesting, but I don't like the act actress that played her in the live movies, so blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. Yeah, specific. <laughs> yeah, I like her in the comics, though, and in the show. Tim says, my favorite superhero is Paco. Speak of the devil, he's literally right here. <laughs> uh, it says, his wire cast superpowers against the dark OBS overlord are legendary. <laughs> he's speaking our language, Tim. Running uh, this Adobe Live Studio is no joke. As you can probably see on the in-between uh, times where you can see the GoPro shot and everyone's like switching places and Paco has like a million cables in his hands and he's just putting them in random computers. There we go. Yes, check this out. Look at his setup. He's literally a wizard. <laughs> There's so much space behind us for activities. I love it. <laughs> nice. Yes, the 9 a.m. X-Men. You know, Dave, you know. She's so much more sassy in the cartoon, Rogue. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Has that Southern sass, totally. And in the movie, she's like Southern and demure and too moody, I don't like it. Yeah, Divad, so if you do uh, stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, you can get those 10, free st or 10 stickers for $1. Very nice. And I actually mentioned that we were gonna look at your portfolio. Yeah. After the chat and win. So maybe we can jump oh, totally. over to that. First, I want to touch on the difference between your um, Behance portfolio and your like professional, my portfolio kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, we talked yesterday about how they are, they're different projects. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have more on your Behance and then on your actual portfolio, it's a little more curated. Yeah. So accurate. I definitely like to have my Behance serve as kind of like my archive for oh, work. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and I still prioritize like the stuff on my portfolio at the top. So like yes. you're still seeing a lot of the same work. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a lot of stuff from grad school on there, ah. um, personal projects, group projects. Mm -hmm. my, my grad school thesis is there. Gotcha. Things that I wouldn't, you know, show first to an employer, mm -hmm. but um, might make me more interesting if they want to dig deeper. Ooh. I always like to think that people 
first they're going to give you like two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. if, if a resume goes through or if you're talking about someone and you send a URL, they're going to like look at the homepage yeah. and decide if they want to go in deeper. Yeah. And then they might look at one or two projects. Yes. So keeping things concise and then like encouraging them to go deeper mm -hmm. and more like by the time they're on your Instagram or on your Behance, like you've got them hooked. They care about what you're doing and who you are. That's a really good point. You need to like offer these pathways and kind of calls to action for people if you really want to welcome them into your world. Yeah, and it should be easy because everybody's stressed out. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to give anyone else more work when yeah. it's like learning about you. It should just be simple. Yeah, really easy. And also easy to contact you if needed, yes. like having your email available or just somehow some way to get in touch with you. Um, let's jump into maybe one or two of these projects and talk about how you've laid them out. Yeah, well I have, so I have a lot of very different projects mm -hmm. on my um, portfolio. We were talking about like different portfolios for different um, types of designers, mm -hmm. different types of industries. I would yeah. say my portfolio is very branding and advertising because that's where I've been. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also have some weird stuff in there that's like more print based here at the bottom, books yeah. I've made, stuff like that that maybe speak to my aesthetic as a designer, but are not the type of professional work I always do. Mm -hmm. And having a balance of both is good because they want to know who, like I want to know who you are. I want to mm -hmm. care about what you find interesting and what you think is beautiful, but the top stuff is like work. So yes. those top four are like real billable projects, things I've done recently. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, so if you want to click maybe on the butterfly flag one. Sure. I also like to set especially branding projects up in a super simple way. I have a written description at the top, which isn't that long, but no one's gonna read that. Like, yeah. Let's just be real. Unless you're curious and go back, no mm -hmm. one's really gonna read that. Mm -hmm. So the images should kind of speak for themselves. So here it's like, here's a logo, simple, no explanation. Mm -hmm. I had a video for this because it became a bigger project. Oh, so that's there, but the image below that, explains the logo in like a super simple way yeah. and it's almost like you almost think like you're dumbing it down too much but it's nice because it, it explains the thought process behind it, it mm -hmm. explains how I made it what it is and I don't need to do a lot of work to get yeah. that I yeah. always like to think of if you're showing like a slide it's like you mm -hmm. get a second to look at it next slide and you should understand Mm -hmm. something about your thought process and why you made decisions. Yeah, this is a great example of instead of showing a million of your actual sketches and like your iterations, you've designed the process for someone to like absorb your process. Mm -hmm. You've designed everything about this. And I have I have like PDFs with um, process work. Mm -hmm. um, I always bring a sketchbook too with me if I'm doing an interview or talking to a group. Um, but I don't always show that, at least on this level. Like I had, I, I have or had a Tumblr at one point with sketches. Mm -hmm. I have a PDF on my, my hard drive that I'll bring. But I think that's all like, especially if you're a working professional and you have like r real world experience, that proves that you can do that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to get in the weeds right away. Wait until they want you to get in the weeds. Yes, right. Uh, Devad wants to know, do you present presentations to clients as well? Are you often pitching things? Yeah, um, it's something I'm doing more and more in my career, mm -hmm. uh, and I like doing that. I think a branding project like this, um, this this is almost the way I would be presenting work if it were a finished project, or, yeah. or the, that upfront is how I pitch logos to clients, like gotcha. the logo, an explanation slide. Um, and working in branding, taught me a lot of the strategic presentation for big ideas in simple form. Um, gotcha. I just, yeah, I like talking about design too, so if you can't tell. Um. You know what you're talking <laughs> about. Also, hey, Susan. Yeah, that's that's a page just to show off that Susan Sarandon was part of this project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what we call a vanity image. Uh, it says nothing really about the project except the celebrities in it. <laughs> That's all that matters, and like your brand color, boom. Yeah. There you go. And then these flags, like this is a this was a live activation, and we actually made these. So if you can cool. have like, I love pictures that are obviously real that are not mm -hmm. mock ups. Like these could be a mock up, but they're not. Like they're so detailed and specific yes. yeah. that it really shows that we made these. Mm -hmm. Some of my work is completely mocked up, which is also great and probably 80% of what I do professionally. Yeah, right. Um, but when you can take real pictures, take the time to take real pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's jump back to your main page and maybe we can contrast that with another project. Do you wanna jump into yeah, a specific Yeah, maybe one? we could do the Gulfstream one. Perfect. So this is a logo um, 
that I worked on for Gulfstream, the private plane company. Ooh. Ooh fancy. Um, mm -hmm. And it is a logo that went through and they're using it, but they're using it like, they're not implementing it fast enough. So all of the touch points, like it's on their social channel. It's on yeah. a few little images. There's not really good assets. They didn't implement it in a big way. So I had to mock up stuff because mm -hmm. um, this is how we wanted to show it and how someday, hopefully with the right money and yeah. implementation, it will look. Yeah. Um, so this is one of their planes that I pulled from their website and mm -hmm. cleaned up and Photoshopped on the logo. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, when you're doing a something that's a plane, you want to see the plane first. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, and then just yeah. some, some, you know, basic template mocks so of business cards. What a posters. nice little detail of this edge color. And like yeah. stuff like that is hard sometimes to capture in a mock-up, mm -hmm. but I think when they're printing, like it's so important. Yeah. So I want to capture that. And that's also why you like make the background dark so that pops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just some like examples of illustration and like taglines we wrote for them. Mm -hmm. Wow. So mock-up or? So mock-up, yes. Mock-up. Um, but a real thing that they're going to someday do. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, mock-ups are, are good and important. All of these are, all these are mock-ups. Whoa, that looks real. Yeah, mock-up, mock-up, mock-up. Mm. This is a real vehicle that really has this logo on it that had terrible photos. So I had to go back to three old pictures of the vehicles oh with the old logos, clean it up and put it together. But you know, like as an image, it's got the plane, it's got the truck, it's got the logo. It says a lot without mm -hmm. having to say anything. That's so it. funny. Like the object actually exists, but the photos are too bad. It's still a mock up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's little videos on their Instagram of this driving around. So it's real, you can see it. It's just, cool. they look terrible. And I would never <laughs> want to put that on my site. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I want to talk about this really quick too. Yeah. It's an example of something that looks like it might be mocked up. But, but it's real. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are, I mean, I hope that that guy's like maybe wasn't walking by at this exact moment. So that's a composite, but mm -hmm. these are all real photos of a project um, we did in LA at my current job. Uh, and these were hand ripped posters for. Prove it, that is your hand. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> that might be a coworker's hand. I don't know if mine. I think that's yours. <laughs> hand models here. <laughs> Um, but he, like the little the little shadow at the bottom with the overlap, those are things I look for in uh, images just to see if it's real. Cause like you could mock up a lot of this, but these are pictures that I took myself while we worked on it and then like color corrected the hell out of because mm -hmm. I'm not a great photographer. <laughs> so these are like really good corrected images. Okay, from but they're real. Raw things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, so this was something we did in LA and uh, I was flown out to hand rip like 300 posters. These are mock-ups. The image above it is real. And okay. you can see the difference. And I think it's good though to, sh to have both in there just to show like the breadth of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes you don't need to see like a full photo mock-up for everything, but it's nice to pace it out. Yeah. And also think about the way it flows as you scroll down. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be like structurally like all close-ups or all far away. It should yeah. kind of like pace itself. Right. Cool. So how do you choose how much to include in a project? Like you have quite a few uh, photos of this mm -hmm. versus like the Gulf Stream stream. It was a little more condensed. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Gulf Stream one, I think is just because the project never got to be that robust. Mm. And it was mostly like, I made a mark. And then to show off a mark though, you never just like, I never just want to show the logo. I want to show the logo living. So yeah. a lot of that was work I did after the project on my own, just so that I can show it. Mm -hmm. This was great because I took a bunch of photos um, and I had a lot to work with. But when I show this like on our company site and on presentations, I pare it down mm -hmm. depending on what the audience is. Right. So this is probably a bigger example because I can because it's my site. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting so it doesn't get too boring. Mm -hmm. But scaling stuff, like you should be able to tell this project with maybe three images. Right. Yeah. If you have to. Cool. So this has been a great example of different ways to present your work, like as a graphic designer and as, as a branding expert. And I mean, it's all like, it also is what you want to be doing. The mm -hmm. type of work you show will be the type of work you end up getting hired to work on. Very so, true. Don't post stuff that you don't want to work on. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, I, I have some print stuff in here, but like most of this is big campaign work mm -hmm. and it's big idea based and like a little illustrative. And that's the type of work I like to do. Mm -hmm. um, I probably wouldn't get hired to do like 
a, a typographic book layout with mm -hmm. this portfolio and have to yeah. retool it and show some different projects. Yeah. Wait, aren't these shoes at the top? Your shoes? Uh, Aren't you wearing some like these yesterday? Though, actually, those are the ones I'm wearing um, oh. because this oh. this first image is not from the campaign. The rest mm -hmm. of the images are all on the campaign. This I wanted like a cover slide that mm -hmm. had the tagline "Gift Yourselves" and like set up the idea before you see the idea. Gotcha. So I took fishing wire and hung my shoes in my bedroom. Wait, and this is real? Yeah, those are real. <laughs> wow. I hung them from fishing wire. Took photos on my iPhone and then like Photoshopped the heck out of them. Uh, add a little bit of grain <laughs> yeah, to the oh, low quality. A lot of grain, a <laughs> lot of like half layer adjustment masks to mm -hmm. like, because I want everything to feel flat and kind of tonally like the other images. Right, so. this almost feels like a 3D model. I know, like, right? It's Which so I don't know if that's cool. good or bad. Maybe I should, it probably was the same amount of time to actually model <laughs> Ma it's but just I cool. had fun doing it. Yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> it's your work. But it, this too, like setting up an idea before you see the idea. Like mm -hmm. this whole idea is like, oh, multiple shoes and like optical illusions. But if you show yeah. that in the first slide, it you lose the tagline. So I yes. want to show that right away. I want to mm -hmm. then build up. So the second image is like back to back, but not that crazy. And yeah. then you like build in intensity, Whoa. like animation crazy and then optical illusion yeah, crazy. Yeah, look at all those legs. The spider guy. <laughs> Super cool. So if you want to check out more of John's work, you can just go to www.hellojohnolson.com or follow him on Behance, which I don't know if I'm doing that. Let me make sure. Oh, yeah. Follow. Yeah, and on Instagram as well. So check him out. I'm going to hop back to your computer. Oh, cool. So we can see what you're working on. And chat, I want to remind you that we have 42 minutes until we're going to start looking at your challenge entries. Um, let's see how many are submitted so far. None! Chat! It's because they're so engaged mm -hmm. in the conversation. That's it's our true. fault. I'm That's sorry, guys. Fault. Oh, naughty, naughty. <laughs> so we want to have at least, let's say five. I want to see five submissions in the next 40 minutes. And you can uh, upload it while you're still working on it and get some feedback. And if you then integrate the feedback, you can upload it again, uh, a totally new version later during a uh, AVAX's stream, Life of AVAX. So cool. So what are we working on now? Uh, so now I'm just kind of going in and refining the masks around things. I think I'm happy with where stuff is. And because it's all the same background, I'm just like doing a feathered oval around everything. I took this, I didn't like the angle, so I copied this section and just warped it a little bit. Mm. So right now it's actually three. We have the front. We have the back. But you warped it? And then we have this guy. Yeah, so we have, let me turn off everything else. Um, I got this bottom one. So it's just like that little section I copied and warped mm -hmm. so that it has just a better angle. Well, what did you use to warp? Did you literally use like? I just used a mesh warp there. Um, just cause it's like, it's so dark and it's fabric so it's easy to, mm -hmm. to cheat. Yeah, very true. I love the different kind of uh, transform commands that Photoshop has. You can warp things, literally like pulling them apart pretty simply. Like you don't mm -hmm. um, have to jump into too crazy of UI to do it. You can change the perspective of things. That's great for when you're mocking up like flat things, things on uh, screens if you need to change the angle of it. Uh, you can even jump into liquify if you really want to jump into some intense kind of compositing. Very cool. People are talking about if they have Converse or not. Michael Crabtree has three pairs. Mm, Jan I Eric has none. Shoes. Me too. And I mean, they're they're owned by Nike, so they like cool stuff because Nike likes to oh. do fun design stuff. Yeah. I would definitely, if you if you haven't followed a lot of their design work, you should check it out because they're one of the companies that likes to play. Mm-hmm. They ain't scared. No, they're a great client. Man, I've been rocking Converse since the fifth grade. Bam, bam. Boom. I think my first ones were just black high tops. And I would have fun with the laces. Yeah. I would express myself. <laughs> I don't think I have any right now, though, because I wore my others to death and they fell apart. Oh, they, I mean, they have a habit of falling mm -hmm. apart. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I literally had them for, like, since high school, and they just, I just got rid of them oh, this year. Oh, that's pretty good. Yes. That's like a... Use you in an ad. Mm. <laughs> there we go. Good quality. Uh, so let us know uh, if you have Converse. And also, Tim said that he was moderating the gallery. So we actually have five submissions already <laughs> for oh, the challenge. Cool. 
So in the next 38 minutes, let's, I don't know how many to ask you to have because I already asked you to have five. As many as we get in the next 38 minutes, I'll be happy with it. It'll be great. Very impressive so far. I see a Wonder Woman. I see some Hulk action mm, happening. So cool. Some Fireman, some Thor Man. <laughs> Thor Man. Thor <laughs> Man. <laughs> that a superhero? <laughs> That's like the best. You're, you're prepping for like mom voice. Mm -hmm. Like I was on the internet and so I found Thor Man. <laughs> Who is this Thor Man? This large glowing man. So we're still filling up this glove, adding some cool. I love how you're using the ellipse marquee tool to make your selections. I mean, when they're little balls like this, you can use the pen tool, but like, why? Yeah, seriously. Um, Makes yeah. a perfect circle for you. And, and then you can just add to the selection for the shadow. Yeah, and even when it's a little oblong, I'll take it around like that. Oh. And then just feather it. Uh. Let's see what happens. Oh, I guess I can gosh. just look on your screen <laughs> and not so far away. <laughs> no, I like I like that you're looking that far away. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the bird's eye view. Yeah. That's what's good. Also, like, I, I'm never working with um, circles this much, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of making a lot of this up. Uh, <laughs> it's working. I like the process. But it's just, you know, making it a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. I think with compositing, there are some specific workflows that you use often like masking things, mm -hmm. but every composite is kind of different because you're making something that's not real. And so it's cool to kind of flex your Photoshop skills and learn more. Problem solve on the fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why this challenge is really cool. We're asking you to composite and kind of see how you solve your solve your problems. Yeah, I don't know where that shape is from. <laughs> Which layer are you? Who are you? Look at all those circle layers. It's a lot. It's I'm trying to there. I'm trying to figure out of like how how much masking I should do in this time versus how many other things. There you go. I don't want to be too repetitive. At some point, everyone's be like, "Yeah, we get it. You're gonna mask another circle." We get it. People are still talking about shoes in the chat, so I guess I'll ask the whole chat: What are your favorite kind of shoes? Are you a boot person? A sneaker person? Do you call them sneakers? Trainers? That's a good question. Tennis shoes. I think I'm a tennis shoes, and I think that's what I call them. Tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. Are you, you're a pop person too, right? I am a pop person. Mm -hmm. Wait, what do you call them? Sneakers? Sneakers and soda. S and S. Classic. Classic. <laughs> Classic John. <laughs> Ooh, Gus is back in the chat. Gus, what are your favorite kind of shoes? I bet I can guess, but we'll let we'll let him answer for himself. I'm a boot person. Oh yeah? I like boots, yes. Those are nice. Mm-hmm, all kinds. Uh, Kroll likes Vans. Michael likes sneakers and high tops. Stephen likes Vans as well. Divad Chelsea boots. I'm in the market for some Chelsea boots, Divad. Let me know if you have some good ones. Cartier, yes, Pop Not Soda, I agree. Gosh. <laughs> A forever debate, right? It's not a debate. <laughs> <laughs> not to me. It's not a debate. <laughs> Brian says he just wears slippers all the time. I could never get into slippers. I have coworkers that bring slippers to work Ooh. and um, will change when they get into the office. They're like, it's time to relax. Uh -huh. <laughs> time to leisure. It always makes me giggle, but I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, totally. Are they like the big fluffy slippers or just kind of the house slippers? They're like house slippers and he always gets, uh... Sang, if you're listening, what kind of slippers do you have right <laughs> yeah, now? Yeah, you're oh, being exposed. I feel like they have cartoon characters on them that uh, change. Oh, cool. Um, it's a collection. What, yeah, what time of year it is or what year you're in. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah, that's true. It is New York, so you got to kind of... Change with the seasons. Get your summer uh, yeah. slips. We got we got those little seasons. <laughs> those little some seasons. Some people tend to like. I do. I do miss my seasons. Uh, I mean, I'm coming out of winter right now, so I can't agree with you. Mm -hmm. But I support you and your <laughs> your feelings. That's fair. I accept it. Uh, let's. <laughs> Brian says the only leisure that's happening is with my feet, because <laughs> the rest of your life is very stressful. <laughs> it's okay. You gotta take it where you can get it. Spherical likes Soconis. 
Is that mm, how you pronounce it? I don't know, but... Sakani's. I'm glad you, you took a stab at it and not me. You know, whatever. It's my job to just serve as the, the human shield for our guests. <laughs> Literally. Uh, NDS likes the Rocket Dog sneakers. Those are always so fun. They got such fun shapes. Rocket Dog's cool. Oh, Michael just likes shoes that you can slip on super easily and go outside quickly. No nonsense. I like that too. <laughs> Tim, don't get me started. About shoes? <laughs> no. <laughs> about how I pronounce lapel. Oh. <laughs> like I, over a year ago, I said lapel one time. Oh, <laughs> for, for the word lapel? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I said lapel, whatever. You should have just gone with it. I mean, like it's a regional choice. Yeah, you know. it's how I was raised. It's how I was raised. <laughs> nice and wholesome with my lapels. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, just let me live. Man, I'm excited to see all of your submissions, chat. I'm waiting for more to come in. But like I said, we are happy with the five that we've gotten. But if you want to surprise me with ten, I I'm mean, you should. Down. Come on, mm -hmm. you guys should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Michael, no. I think this is a really intense challenge on the time frame you guys have. So I'm so excited to see what you come up with. Yeah, and I'm interested to hear when we're reviewing if you have been working on it previously, like during the previous challenge and you got feedback and then mm. uh, did like a version two. So I'll probably ask you all about that. But I don't see any previous challenge version twos yet. So these seem like they're all kind of off the cuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Ryan. Yes, we've had a lot of funny, funny words said on stream. Everybody's different. Everyone pronounces stuff differently. <laughs> okay. Goodness, let us, let us oh, be us. Let me be me. Let me be me, please. Uh, do you have any uh, suggestions for Oops. artists that are just getting started that are trying to find their voice? Um, oh. And maybe they feel the pressure to be like someone else when they're making work. How do you kind of make that jump to just be like, I'm gonna just be me. That's a hard question, especially in the in the world we're in, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's so much online and so many other people, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's um, don't don't be hard on yourself one way or another because sometimes you are gonna like do something that you saw somewhere and you wanted to try. You know, mm -hmm. you might you might be. Um, doing an homage to somebody or, or trying a trend, and that's cool. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, eventually, you know, you'll figure out what you want to do. So I, like, obviously don't try and copy people, but also yeah. don't feel so much pressure to, I don't know, the words like artist and voice and like, just, just do you. Yeah, right, and if you don't quite know what that means yet, then like, that's you, that's okay, you're figuring it out. Yeah, I mean, we all we all have fun making stuff, so just have fun mm -hmm. making things, and um, eventually you'll figure out what that means, I think. Yep, totally. I still feel like I'm finding my voice every day. It's okay. It's it should good. be something that changes, right? Yeah, because we change yeah. as people. Totally agree. Chat, if you have any ideas about that, let us know, or questions, or anecdotes about when you've been finding your voice as a designer. Um, it's always funny to hear people's kind of big learning moments, like maybe their first client situation or the first time something goes south with a project. And I feel like it's not, I don't know, Say when you say like finding your voice, that makes it sound so official. Mm -hmm. um, it's something you can only really see in hindsight, I think. Yes. Um, you can never be like, I'm now going to find my voice as an artist. <laughs> Here I go. Because <laughs> you'll never get there because you're not, it, it's it's just who you are, you mm -hmm. know? So just, just make stuff and then uh, make sure you're doing it in like an honest and authentic way. And then at some point you'll have made enough that you can look back on it and be like, hey, look at all these trends. Yes. I guess I am into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you kind of know like the kind of stuff that you like, uh, even if it isn't trendy. Like I would, I would encourage you to still pursue things absolutely that are just you, because chances are not a lot of people are doing that kind of stuff, and it's a great place for you to explore. 
Yes, people are talking about how we had Michael on stream. So uh, French Michael that you met mm, yesterday. Yeah. He used to host quite often, uh, and he hasn't for a while, but he did last week. But he's, great. he still exists, I promise. We were hanging out with him yesterday. Yes, he he's is a real well. person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he mm -hmm. is here. And just because he has a French accent does not mean he's intimidating. Okay, I might have said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like anyone with a French accent initially comes off as intimidating, and he's the nicest yep. nicest person ever. And I was like, yeah, but at first, but, you hear that accent, you're like, oh gosh, I better not mess up. Yeah. This guy speaks French. <laughs> he's way smarter than I am. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, everybody misses him. So we'll tell we'll tell him that you miss him, everybody. He might even be watching. Mm. Michael. Hey, hey. Maybe hiding in the studio. It's eerily quiet in here. That that creeped me out a little bit. I just started looking around like is he? <laughs> Who's under the table? <laughs> <laughs> the calls coming from inside the house. Oh my gosh. Are you a uh, horror movie kind yes. of person? Yes. <gasps> oh really? my gosh. I'm so excited to see us. Me too. At some point, it comes out like Thursday, right? Yeah, I think it's in the 20s, the 20s of March oh. sometime. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be here in beautiful San Francisco, oh. uh, my first time in the city exploring. But part of me is like, I wonder if we just go see the movie at some point. Is that mm -hmm. lame on my, no. on my trip here? You just go see the movie in a cool theater. Yeah. And then you're good to go. That's, that's, that's a good... That's a good solve. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, I'll say hi to Michael for you, Jan Eric. I I will try to remember. <laughs> um, do you, you find oh go ahead. Oh, I was gonna ask if you're a horror movie person. So I used to be real, real into them, uh, like in an unhealthy way. Uh -huh. Like I would watch The Ring and like The Grudge uh -huh. like a lot. Just yeah. for fun. Like in what happened? <laughs> I think I was going through puberty at the time, so I was like, ooh, dark, edgy, cool. <laughs> uh, but I turned out okay. <laughs> but I kind of just realized that that's like a lot of darkness to fill my brain with. Okay. So now I yeah. just read horror books instead. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I, I just like changed that. my like, No, I like that. My books media of type. Any kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is starting to feel kind of good. This mm -hmm. guy needs to be adjusted. Obviously, it's he's very way bright. too bright. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do that later, so. Okay. Don't think I'm not seeing that. Though. Yes, noted. We um, see. And I feel like it should be reaching for something. I think I took some oh. color ones. Do I have? Yeah. I don't want this color, but maybe. It's on my head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. I love it. Hi. <laughs> Balancing. We're really missing out on some like weird green screen opportunities to have things float above us. Oh and yeah. Interacting with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to get just like a green suit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, just floating heads and mm -hmm. then somehow design happens. And somehow it just happens. Isn't that how it happens? Yeah, floating oh, real? heads. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, and Eric is talking about Japanese horror films and just horror in general. Very interesting genre. What are, what are people's favorite horror movies? Yeah, let us know. Someone was saying that uh, Ryan used to watch scary movies just to get people, just to scare other people, like in The Grudge. Mm. Um, yeah, and Eric's talking devious. about- Yes, yeah, super devious. The Signal. I've never heard of The Near Signal. By, maybe I should watch it though. Mm. I just watched, I forget what it's called, maybe The House. Oh, Haosu. That's a Japanese horror movie, but it's like super campy and terrible. It's pretty awesome. Whoops, that's not <laughs> ask. That's just blue. That's been like a theme today. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'll constantly think I'm on a mask and I'm like painting colors <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> it's that happened is. a few times and that's why that command Z is like the best uh -huh. because I do it real quick and hope no one noticed. <laughs> it's part of the workflow. Part of the workflow. Truly. Oh my gosh, Kendall. Yes, hereditary. Hereditary. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I talked to Kendall about Hereditary a lot, <laughs> so that's I think why she said it. But the um oh my gosh! So I the sister company of uh, my employer. I work at Be Real. Mm -hmm. Our sister company is called Be Real Films, and they announced and just released a teaser for a movie they're working on with the director of Hereditary. His <laughs> follow-up horror movie. It's called Midsummer, and it looks super cool. And you should Google it. Oh my gosh! I um, oh. Hereditary messed me up. I've talked about this so many times on stream, so I'm not gonna belabor the point, but I still think about it all the time. It's so good. So scary. 
Or I'm gonna Google it. Maybe yeah. Somewhere. Scary movie. We're a, uh, my design agency is a Swedish company, and so Midsummer's like Swedish pagan horror movie something. Whoa, cool. Kind of sounds like The Witch. Yeah, yeah. There's Midsummer. a lot of really good horror movies right now. But same guy. <laughs> okay, can't look at this on stream. I'll get spooked. <laughs> I'll get thoroughly spooked. <laughs> Who is that guy? Who is that? Have you ever had a uh, Photoshop horror movie happen to you where you like lose a huge file or you have oh, to start God. over? Yes. <gasps> Tell me. Oh, I'm like, knock on wood. Uh, it's not happening now. <laughs> it's very nice new desk wood. <laughs> um. I'm trying to think of like specific moments. I've definitely though had late nights mm -hmm. redoing work that I know I've done already. Ugh. Um, and that's just rough. And yeah. like, I know people be like, well, that's a good learning experience <laughs> for like, you. But up. even at, you know, at 32 as a professional <laughs> for how many years, I still sometimes do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I will never shame someone for having that happen because we all forget sometimes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's all I can do is empathize because it's terrible. Ugh, but you know, you just, you gotta put in the work and you redo it. Yeah, in those situations, do you find that the second version's better or does it come out a little worse and you're like, no. Uh, I don't know. I think that's, that'd be interesting if you could compare, but you can't. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, I think I will never say the second version's better. Mm. I will not say it's worse. It, you know, it might be slightly different. Um, and you just got to kind of roll with it, but I'll never be like, well, and then it happened for a reason. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> it was a mistake. It was just a mistake and life <sighs> happens like that. We got to move on. Mm -hmm. I found that when that's happened to me, and maybe this is because I make mostly like illustration work that the second time I do it, it's like practicing the drawing again. So oh, it does come out better. Um, I, I feel like the second time in design at least goes faster. Yeah. Cause you're not making decisions. Mm -hmm. You're just, just executing because the decisions have already been made. Mm -hmm. That was a huge thing that I remember learning in school was the idea that if you come up with all the ideas first and then you literally just execute, like you save yourself so much heartache instead of having to make decisions oh. while you're executing. We're it's kinda, exhausting. It's kind of like the, um, the music conversation we had yesterday where it's like I can listen to this type of music when I'm just making because mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. have to think about it. Yeah, because I already thought about it. That's a great thing about when you really practice your techniques too. Like say you are uh, painting with a certain kind of paint. If you know how that paint works, you can literally just execute instead of just having to like learn how do I watercolor when you're trying to make a watercolor painting. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Photoshop. It's nice to know your workflows. Mm -mm -mm. I like the idea of someone sitting down to paint and then just says, how do I water? Like holding the brushes and like staring out in an existential moment. <laughs> how do I watercolor? As you <laughs> brush. As I put the blue layer. on again. <laughs> all right. Happens Those feel kind of nice. I feel like there's an, a kind of a tangent here that upsets me mm. that I might go in. But, I wouldn't have noticed it unless you said something. Right? I almost want this guy to overlap there. Yeah. Tangents are so annoying unless they're intentional, yeah. which this is not. But it's attached to here, and I don't know if... Oh, so much work. I don't know. Maybe I do want that. <laughs> yeah, maybe I do. And where's that? There we go. That's not terrible. Hey, there you go. So for those of uh, us who might not know, what would you call a tangent? How would you describe it? Yeah, that? so a tangent would be like, let's make one super obvious. When two things almost overlap, they mm -hmm. just touch each other. Because like the worst thing is a non-decision. So a decision is like they're not uh, overlapping, they are overlapping. Yes. A tangent is like when these two things almost touch, but are they or are they not? Mm -hmm. Like either put it here, or put it there. Yeah. You know? Well, now it's making a tangent there. So, <laughs> um, and it, it's it's annoying. Yeah, and it's uh, most of all, it's like a distraction for your viewer because their yeah. eye will go there, and then they'll start thinking about like, well, what, like, why am I looking here? Yep. Why are they touching? And it that's... just creates it creates contrast that you don't need mm -hmm. in an area. Mm -hmm. um, and I might even take this shape behind and play with it because 
if I make it come out more, maybe it looks less weird. Uh huh. You're filling if up the space here. a little more. Yeah, there's less of a tangent there. Uh huh. These are all like silly compositional things that are super important because right now you, there's that gap from the background where I have to fill it in, but like that creates contrast and my eye is just going here. Yep. And it's like, I don't want you to see that. I want yeah. you to see this as like one big texture, mm -hmm. not as separate objects. Right, 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 right. That's true, Tim. Same with the edge of an image. Like if you have things getting too close to an yeah. edge and it doesn't look on purpose. Ooh. And I mean, if you're doing it on purpose, it could be great, you know? Yes. It could, like tension's good mm -hmm. if you mean to create it. Just make yeah. sure it's meant to be there. Yeah, tension is a really interesting design principle that I don't think it's talked about enough. Like we talk about flow and rhythm and stuff, but how do you create that tension in a design? Spacing is often a big part of that, how close you put things to each other and how dynamic shapes are. See, this is gonna be getting nitpicky. I could do this all day. Okay, let's see what you do. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I like this, so it's like, do I want to warp this in a little bit? Ooh. How do I want this angle to be? You know, like, uh -huh. again, like, if it if it looks like the shape is weird, then that draws focus to it, and I don't think I want it to mm -hmm. be weird, mm -hmm. but I also want it to feel natural, so is that better than that? I don't know. I might want to bring it out more, but we're just going to leave it for now. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. Yeah, but these are good. all things that think about. Yeah, yeah, and if you're just starting as a designer or a creator, like, you might not be asking these questions yet, but you will. You will. <laughs> and I think this is kind of funny that like our backgrounds, both of us, we're in illustration, now we mm -hmm. do design, same principles in both of these things. Like, um, obviously there's different things to think about with design too, but there's, uh, it's all composition principles that you're thinking through. Yeah, what kind of story are you trying to tell and how are you telling it with your composition? Anel agrees, tangents create tension. Totes. Bye, Racine. Mm -hmm. See you later. And Beck, hello. Good to see you. If you're just joining us for the first time on Adobe Live today, uh, say something in chat. We wanna say hello to you. Uh, you don't have to stay active, but just say hi. We'll say hi to you, and then it'll be over. It's that easy. <laughs> I'm always interested to hear too how you all found out about Adobe Live. Were you just on Behance, you're just exploring, and you saw the Live tab? Did you get a notification? Did you hear from a friend? Let me know. Juicebox says you guys are dope. Oh, oh, thanks. Thanks, Juicebox. <laughs> so kind of ye. Did you know about Adobe Live before you were yeah, I, I spent a lot of time on Behance. Mm -hmm. Some of it's like good professional time, and then some of it's me like wasting time looking <laughs> through feeds of work. At some, I mean, you're never really wasting time, but like yes. scrolling. Yeah, um, gathering inspiration, aka yeah. not working. But I use it for, for like for work too, to, to find make mood boards mm, and look mm -hmm. at other designers' portfolios. Uh, and it's kind of nice seeing it pop up on the on the homepage there. Yeah, to truly agree. Someone says, Cartier says through YouTube you found us, so on the CC of Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Mm. Krister says on Creative Cloud, so probably the app on your computer from the Future Collab, nice. So we have some new friends saying hello in chat. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Juicebox says he likes our chemistry. Oh. Very cool. I do this too. This spinoff is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. This vodcast. Uh, Amir, hello. Who else is new? Saif, good to see you. Cecilia, Burke, Krister, Marty, Christina. Love it. Love seeing all your names and your little icons. I don't know if you knew this chat, but you can click on each other's uh, profile pictures, those little circles, and that will take you straight to their Behance portfolio. So if you want to check out someone's work, you can just click on that. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Give them a follow, give them, give them an appreciate on their projects. What's up, Colby? Maybe I just want to turn all these. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh. <laughs> Feels good, man. Oh. I, I'm kind of making this up right now. Whoa, Whoa. not that one. <laughs> Green gumball, wow. I think I want to make everything kind of monochromatic. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to desaturate these little guys, but if I 
put them under this mask now, they get like a little purple hue, and That's then when nice. I desaturate, I can like paint it on a little bit and keep some of the purple maybe. Cool. It's making it too purple, but for now it's better than that green, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it fits a lot better. Uh, and Nell's wondering, how did you shoot these photos? It's so professional. I have uh, a friend who is a great photographer. Uh, his name is David Elon, and he uh, has work on the internets. <laughs> <laughs> that I will show you. <laughs> uh, but he, he's a really great photographer and uh, a good friend. And so when I told him, about this project. He was like, come over, let's shoot it together. And he uh, did a lot of the technical stuff that um, I cannot do when I shoot photos. He's also like really smart and we get along well. Mm -hmm. And that I think is helpful because he was able to point things out and like kind of concept based on my concepts. You know, yeah. I showed him the sketches. It's like you brief a photographer in a professional uh, in relationship, hopefully you have someone who like will one up your ideas. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this this idea specifically today where the, the little pearls come out, we were just like talking about stuff we were seeing and it happened in the conversation. Yeah, right. That's awesome. So check out his work, y'all, if you're interested. It's really nice as a creative to have other creative friends that you can boost each other with your different skill sets. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. On my team here at work, I work with a lot of other creatives, but we all kind of have our different things we're like good at. So you always know you can go ask this person for feedback because they really know what they're talking about. It's really important to have that community and hopefully chat that you have that community here with each other. It's a big point. Look at this all purple world. Ooh, how royal. How royal. Mm, oh, I like that. Indeed. <laughs> Chat, you've got 12 minutes until we're gonna be looking at submissions. So we're, I'm guessing that we're gonna have a couple more come in. Can't, can't wait to see. If you're still working on your challenge, uh, we are asking you to do a composite today where you're either gonna make yourself into a superhero or another image of your choice. Uh, check out the WooBox link and click on view, view Gallery if you wanna see some examples of work and get real inspired. Trying to think of how I want this 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 relationship to be. <laughs> this. I don't want it to. Yeah, I don't want it to touch exactly the top or mm -hmm. bottom. I kind of want it to snap in between. That feels nice. Cool. Um, and then I accidentally masked this, so I got to move it up the same amount. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. What's up, Don? Don says, "Long time listener, first time caller." Yes. That's Good to my have favorite. you on the horn, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now this is going to turn into like Delilah on Delilah. the radio. I would <laughs> love to be like out. Delilah. <laughs> oh, you could do a Delilah, I think. <laughs> it's a, just good all around. I love it. Eric, hello. Ashi is in Atlanta. Super cool. Love it. Atlanta is on my uh, list of places I want to go. I've never been. Yeah. San Atlanta. Francisco was on that list, <gasps> and now I'm here. Jerk. So you put it out into the universe and it happens. Mm -hmm. I feel like these hot tips keep appearing. <laughs> I don't know why and they make me so confused <laughs> when they do. I only recently updated um, my Creative Cloud because I didn't realize that there was an update and mm -hmm. then all these things change and I'm like, they'll just be windows <laughs> popping up at different moments. Like, what's going on? Photoshop is like, I'm trying to help you. And you're like, oh, stop. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, but also what? <laughs> Yeah, you can turn those off. Probably, I uh, should do that. <laughs> uh, Amir's wondering, is this a real life project or is it just for Adobe Live? It's kind of in between the two. Mm -hmm. It's a real uh, client that I work with and I approached them about this opportunity and was like, hey, could I do stuff for you uh, as just kind of a fun experiment and then give it to you afterwards and they were down for it. Um, so it's like the best of both worlds where it could be real, but also I'm not under pressure to like show them things mm -hmm. every step of the way. I can just kind of show them what I want when I want and see if they like it. Right. And we were talking yesterday about how they have a social presence, but it's not really branded. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is their feed now. Mm -hmm. So they have like incredible work. Yeah. And examples of like, these are our gloves. Like They're amazing. Yeah. And, and a lot of the photo shoots, people in their gloves do work. Great, mm -hmm. um, but as a brand language, there's you know there's a lot of room I think to define stuff. So, yeah. um, could be a fun opportunity down the road to turn this into 
something more. Mm -hmm. And especially seeing these posts and what you're creating, it looks like a great match. Like we talked about that fantastical yeah, aspect. Yeah, right? Some of the world makes sense and there's a lot of color blocks mm -hmm. and um, yeah. I think that's, you know, you can make a brand from scratch, but then it's also kind of fun to organically work on a brand that, you know, see what's already there and what you can uh, mm -hmm. take from that. Yeah, let it speak for itself. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay, cool, so you can disable those hot tips in the settings. Thank you, Tim. Nice, I will be doing that before tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I think it's because you'll hover over a t uh, tool and then we'll start talking about something super yes. interesting and it's like, ah. Yeah, because I think if I, when I'm normally working, I'm not paying attention long enough to see them come up. Yeah. Probably not a lot of hovering happening either. You're just no, working just so like quickly. No, it's like frantic, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> frantic clicking. Why frantic clicking working? is very much my workflow. <laughs> Me too. Oh boy. Oh, that's funny. Michael says that he's the kind of person that when there's an update for software, he immediately does it. I'm a little bit wary. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear if there's any bugs in this piece first, if it's gonna break my computer, and then I'll update. Feels mm -mm -mm. nice. What is our, uh, what's our time? Oh, I'm trying our to time. think of what I should be, how far to push this, and what we should be doing today. So we have about seven and a half minutes until we're gonna start looking at challenge submissions. Nice. Uh, and then you won't have very much time to work after that, so. Seven and a half minutes, so I should start a brand new project right now. Do it! <laughs> Just kidding, that's crazy. <laughs> Yee! Uh, we are gonna be working on some more stuff tomorrow as well. Mm. You're gonna be back. Yeah. So you said that on the third day, we might start jumping into actually inputting some of this information into some social Yeah, forms. I've got, I've got a, a, and I'm definitely gonna post these on my Behance afterwards, mm -hmm. cause it's like, there's so much fun stuff that's, I can't do it all, at all here. Yes. Um, but there's a third composition I wanna maybe start on, and then um, I also wanna maybe uh, put some of these in context and see if we can crop them and play with them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll probably do a little bit of both of those. Perfect. Uh, maybe maybe we'll end up with two finished in context and then one started that I will finish and post to my Behance later. Yeah, like a little uh, treat. Yeah, we'll and the, the third one's peek. gonna be cool too, I think, so oh, you'll yeah. wanna see it. Yeah. Here's a hint. Yeah, I tried to theme each one. <laughs> so the first one's like city. Uh -huh. This is a uh, nightmare before Christmas. Explosion, Explosion of bugs. And the third <laughs> one is like the Kraken, I think. It's like this. <laughs> You know, the Kraken? Yeah. Like this? Like, just, just keep doing, please, please. I shouldn't be able to see myself in front of me. I'm having too much fun. This yeah, vanity cam. Because I've got a lot of these. Let's look at them now. Why not? We got Why seven not? minutes, yeah, guys. Yeah. We're not gonna Six them. minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah. We got a lot of these. Ooh. And I feel like there's a weird sea creature in here. Yes. And I know we have um, some people at Adobe that don't like hands very much. I don't know if I'm supposed <laughs> to say that. Uh, so I apologize in advance for everything that's on the screen right now. Yeah, you might want to look away. Your nightmare, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just love how happy you look in the photos. You're like looking at your hand like, wow, how majestic. It's, it's like, yeah, it's very uh, angelic, <laughs> yeah. kind of tra transcending. Yeah, you're like, when did I get this lovely? Wow. Really, it was just um, my friend David being like, now move this way. And I'm like, it feels weird. He's like, just hold it. <laughs> You get a bunch okay. of pictures. <laughs> this feels uncomfortable. Oh my gosh. Yeah, those might be those might be pricey gloves. Krista saying, I can't afford those. I think they're a little expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're like handmade. They're all custom made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, but if you go on their Instagram, there's like so many random celebrities that have worn them. Yeah. And, um, it's definitely cool. How cool would it to be to work in an industry where it's like, you work very closely uh, with something exciting, but like, I don't know, you would never think about the gloves someone is wearing at the Academy Awards. Right? It's like someone made that. Someone made that, yeah. Yeah, and they can see it on stage and be like, yep, that's me right there. It's so cool. It's, it's especially when like everything is so mass marketed now, like there's still, there's still craft people making stuff out there. Oh um, yeah. And industries like that are, are very much alive and very cool. Mm -hmm. And you should support them. Yeah. Great. Craftspeople are the best people. <laughs> Ooh, shiny, says Tim. Mm. Yes, Take a shiny. little bit of the saturation out. I think I'm just gonna like 
brush it kind of. Cool. Because I don't I don't want to get rid of all of it. The edges are kind of nice, so mm -hmm. I think it's just like brushing each one of these babies right in the center. <laughs> Too bright still, but we'll get to you, don't yes. worry. Yes. There we go. Hand done with a mouse, I should say. I know, I should be using a tablet for this, but it's so nice with a mouse. Yeah, if you're not really worrying about opacity too much or like pressure, yeah, it's all good. And there you go. Just that little bit of color mm -hmm. to get rid of it. Awesome. What we're, else we got? We're seeing quite a few of these submissions come through right at the buzzer. So if you're working on your superhero composition and you would like to get feedback from myself and John, uh, you have about three and a half minutes to get those uploaded. And if you are not done yet, no worries because we have one more stream right after us from one to three. So you can submit your work then. And then we're gonna pick one lucky winner at the end of the day to win a free year of Creative Cloud from the whole day's uh, submissions. But yes, here's our schedule for the week starting at 8.30. We've got Howard doing the XD Daily Creative Challenge, followed by Jesus and Paul doing some awesome compositing, John and myself doing some really cool editing, retouching, all the good stuff, and then Life of Avax coming on at the end of the day for more compositing goodness. And I think everyone's kind of talking about their portfolios as well this week. Uh, how to dust it off, get it ready for maybe that new job, what kind of work that you should include depending on what kind of um, industry you're in, and how to tell a good story with your projects. It's very important and it takes a lot of time. Um, a lot of times people just want to throw their images in a portfolio and be like, boom, there it is. But yeah, absolutely. But I want to think about it a little bit more. Telling a story about yourself, because we're so used to telling stories mm -hmm. for other, yeah. other clients and other people. Yeah, it's the same process. You are just the subject and your work is the subject. Anel says, I love crafts and artisan people. Yep. The best. So creative, hardworking. They can literally make things in real life, <laughs> not just digitally. So cool. So I definitely accidentally selected the whites in here. That's what oh, I'm going through now. Oh, I see. And just taking out this little purple um, because I, I selected all the same color and then I forgot that it's inside these. <laughs> gotcha. This is very nitpicky, John, I have to say. I know, I know, <laughs> but like, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> Krister says, did I just hear a burp or was it just me? I don't think either of us burped. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> but now I'm like, am I doing it not realizing? Oh my gosh, is it just one long burp? Someone's I don't like, know. oh, I'm so glad someone finally said it. John's been <laughs> doing it for years and didn't oh, even know. Oh no. Um, a lot of times people's stomachs will growl, including mine, because it's right before lunch. But That might be real. That might be real. It might, might have happened to me anything. earlier. I mean, these mics are pretty fine-tuned just to our mouth holes, so who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Christina says, good luck in the challenge. Yes, I second that. You have under a minute to get your work uploaded. Ooh, so exciting. Mm -hmm. So get those going. <laughs> I love the purple choice that you've gone with. I wasn't That's expecting fun. that. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to do it either, but I was going to change the glove at one point, and then I'm like, no, it's like so. It's really gorgeous. Beautifully rich. Though. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like this is starting to feel, starting to feel good. Mm -hmm. I like it. And after we look at the submissions in just a minute, uh, we can go over everything you did today and then what you're going to work on tomorrow. Cool. And then we'll peace out for the day, but not for another 30 minutes, 25 cool. minutes. Cool. <laughs> oh, cool. So have you edited the lighting? On that ball? No. It looks less bright now. Maybe I've just looked I, at it. For well, too so long. I think I put. No, I haven't done anything. <gasps> What's wrong with my eyeballs? Oh, gosh. Oh, I, no. I'm wondering if I should paint over it. I don't really know how I'm going to do this. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah, I mean, our deadline has hit, so we can just worry about our challenges for now. Yeah. Cool. So, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight submissions to look at, and there might even be more coming Ooh, in. Oh, exciting. Yeah, let me get these open and then we can take a peek see. Again, to remind you all, we've been challenging you to make a composite to turn yourself or another subject into a superhero. 
So using photo collaging, using manipulation to composite together your dream superhero image. I'm going to get this open and we can start taking a yeah. peek. Yay! So here's our first Whoa. submission. Look at all these. Whoa, these Yay. are wild. This is so movie poster Marvel. It's awesome. All right, so this is by Gustavo. Check this out. All the different layers of depth. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm mm -hmm. like, my brain is struggling to even take it all in and like yeah. <laughs> comment on it. I'm just like, wow, it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, the imagery definitely looks like it meshes together well. Yeah, I'm so curious to see like what what images were used here and how mm -hmm. many, because it could, yeah, it could be, there's so many things happening. Right, I'm guessing that definitely this front layer with this fence is its own because it seems a little transparent right mm -hmm. here. These sparks are probably their own. I like the sparks a lot for mm -hmm. creating depth. Um, yeah. Then overlapping on the bottom, but not around the face. It's, yes. It's well placed. Right, it's, I'm guessing that maybe you masked some of the sparks out that landed mm -hmm. in places you didn't want them. Yeah. Cool, do you find anything distracting that you might even mask out further? Mm. I wonder if, um, it's hyper nitpicky, but you saw me all day, so that's what I'm into. <laughs> yes. I wonder if the, the sparks around the face frame her a little too much. Like okay. there's like the three right near there. Yeah. I wonder if like taking maybe the ones on the right, moving them away. Because mm -hmm. the face, I kind of want to go to the face. I think the two on the right might be a little distracting, but that's gotcha. so silly and little. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really nice. Yeah, your, your eye definitely does go to her face almost immediately just by the way everything is laid out. Super cool. Um, yeah, I love the atmospheric perspective. You have the kind of graying out of the background as it gets further away and things up close are more vibrant and saturated. Really nicely done, Gustavo. Mm -hmm. I want to know all of the different images you used. Yeah, I wish it was like a carousel image where you mm -hmm. click right and it shows all the, yes. all the pieces that make it up. Definitely. Let's check this one out. This is by Vic. Ooh. Catching a soccer ball that's on fire. Ooh. Goal. Cool. I like the saturation of color here mm -hmm. on the way that, because it looks like maybe the fire and that, that earth image, I'm, I'm assuming maybe they came saturated and then the way you match that in the, the figure, it's nice. Like whatever, mm -hmm. what, the way you balance them out so that all the images kind of feel like they're treated the same way. Yeah, the darks everywhere seem like a very rich mm -hmm. dark blue. So they kind of match each other. I think you did a good job uh, choosing an image that has lighting that yeah. is very space-like, yeah. um, very stark, I mean. Gosh, these are these are all really good. Cool, what do you think about the composition just as a design? I like the way the arc is kind of guiding you, like mm -hmm. as a visual guide, it almost follows his eye line to the right. ball. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a slight tangent with the camera and the globe behind it, yeah. and I, I don't, it, Maybe it's something that you like there, or maybe mm -hmm. you knock the camera up a slight bit. So that the, the camera? Or Sorry, camera. What is he? Oh, his hands. Yeah, he's trying Why to catch it. Why didn't he was holding a camera? <laughs> he's like taking a picture of this flaming oh, soccer ball. Uh, near the lapel, the camera. The lapel. Um, <laughs> oh, no. His hands. Uh, his hands, like, you know, the way the, the, the globe just yeah. touches the top. I kind of wish it was knocked up. A mm -hmm. tad, yeah. but I really like that um, globe as a kind of guiding directional yeah. line. Totally, I agree. Nicely done. This is by Vic. Good job. All right, this is by Savanch. Shit, Savanch. Is this is this Iron Man and the Hulk merged it together? It seems like it in like some interesting pixelated way. I like the pixelated stuff. I mm -hmm. like that you took something graphic and brought it in here. Wow, what a big man. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it's merged really well the, as like a kind of blending mm -hmm. for both of the yeah. two images. I'd be interested to know just how this was done because it almost looks like it's illustrated. So maybe you took photographs and painted on top. Because yeah. this looks very photographic down here, but like on the arm especially, it looks like it's matte painted. Mm. Very interesting. A nice kind of solid composition, centered. The contrast of the eyes, like the lighting is nice, mm -hmm. the dark, dark, and the bright lights. Yeah, yeah. Nicely done. Do your eyes go to a specific place when you first look at it? I keep going to the highest contrast, like in the eyes and then the center yeah. reflection, mm -hmm. which is, um, it's nice, right? That's like the reflection of Iron Man's little yeah. light up thing. His light up His thing. His camera in the center. <laughs> that everyone has. Yeah, the heart. camera, all these characters I'm now gonna place <laughs> in them. Um, 
Yeah, I agree. I'm almost tempted to say that some of the areas of high contrast are a little distracting. Like, like right the here, bottom ones? my mm. eye goes like straight down to his leg and I'm like, wait, what am I doing down here? Mm. I'll go back up. Yeah, that's nitpicky for sure. Really nicely done. I mean, all, we have to be nitpicky because these are all so good. Yeah, that's true. What are we going to critique? Yeah. All right, this is by Shaji. Oh, I like. Are you like Gambit? Are you throwing playing cards? Cool. Mm -hmm. Is that his tablet that he's popping out of the frame? Oh, yeah. So this is like a monitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's little windows logo at the bottom. Whoa. Or a tablet, perchance. There's so much going on here. But I like the depth of composition you're creating mm -hmm. by having the frame and like things coming out and, and um, uh, it's it's compositionally nice. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I'm a little confused I think on the, the cards where mm -hmm. there's like such a blur on some of them and mm -hmm. some are so in focus mm -hmm. and they're next to each other. I understand what you're doing but I almost wish maybe the blur covered one of the in focus ones just so my brain's yeah. like oh that's in front, that's behind. Yeah. Especially in the bottom right I I'm keep go they keep going back and forth in my brain like yeah. this in depth. It's like your eye is a camera. Wait, mm -hmm. wait. Um, or another way you could solve that is make a much larger size difference between them because mm. if this is so focused, it's probably a lot closer to you. Yeah, yeah, because you're doing a size difference. It, I see you're you're definitely doing it, but you're right, mm -hmm. exaggerating it even more mm -hmm. for how blurred they are. Yeah, would help. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, and that's this great. Is Shaji, very cool. All right, this is Thor Man. From Ethan Davis. Oh, it included the images. Yes. Yeah. So you can see how awesome you are. Wow. So we have mm. stock image, add some fire to it, got a suit, got some lightning, and the figure. Is that a house on fire behind? Yeah. Oh gosh, it got dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who set it on fire? Did he set it on fire? I was about to say, is he a superhero or super villain? Mm -hmm. I can't tell. He's an anti-hero. <laughs> like, it was an evil house. Guys. Yeah, you don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's telling a story, that's for sure. Cool, I like the quality of the light here. It's, like I keep saying, very atmospheric. Yeah, it's like green. the, the purpley grain kind mm -hmm. of overlay on some stuff is mm -hmm. nice. So that when the, you have the brights of the lightning, it really pops because there's nothing else that's really that kind of uh, bright anywhere. I like how you framed it with a vignette. Um, it's cool. It shows us what the, the focal point is. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I almost wish that I saw more of this guy. Like it seems like his arms are a little close to the bottom. I, I, I like the centering mm -hmm. a lot, but yeah, I almost wish I saw it. I feel like you put him there because there's an image of the house behind. Yeah. And I almost wish you decided one way or another what we were going to see. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind him bigger and like up and then just like ignoring what's behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. Nice job. This is by Ethan. Okay, on to the next. Massimiliano. Whoa. Whoa, what is happening what here? What is this? <laughs> This is some wildness. Is this like Gulliver's Travels? Yeah, but like the giant like, escapes. Yeah, but like Orange County Gulliver's Travels. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I like it. Yes. <laughs> he finally escapes back to his aquatic back world. Back to his California beach life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or I kind of imagine like this guy came and like wreaked havoc on this nice beach village and now he's just escaping into the water. Oh, yeah, because there like, is no. like fire over the water, yeah. which is uh, a little dark. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But everyone seems very happy that the water's on fire. Yeah, yeah. I love the contrast of the warm, like the orange specifically with blue. That's kind of like this classic action color combo, the mm. blue and the orange. You see that on a lot of action movie posters. The, the little... Uh, rope attached to his ankle, the mm -hmm. way it kind of connects to those people. It really unifies compositionally because mm -hmm. you got a lot of like little things happening, yeah. but it feels like one element yeah. because of the way that loops through. So that's very nice. Yeah, it is really nicely placed. Because it could be, it could be like, it could be dangerous to have that many little silhouettes and be like, whoa, what's happening? Yeah. But it really feels unified yeah. with that. Yeah, nice job. So this was by Massimiliano, nice job. All right, let's check this one out. More sports Ooh. superheroes. Cool. So much nice focus. So this is by Bob. So textural. Yeah, right? 
There's some very nuanced stuff going on Gosh, too. Like little wow. energy flares coming off of his legs and his wings. I also like how solid the composition is. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of negative space, but it doesn't feel wasted. It feels intentional, like it's framed well with the yep. shape, but then you have a little bit of like stuff around mm -hmm. to make it feel activated, but yep. you're like, boom, confident this is the composition. Yep. And I like that a lot. Yeah, that is a very confident design as we were talking about yesterday. Very cool. And then if you do zoom in, you do see some little details. Yeah. The lighting is so nice, how it's coming from on his foot, and you can see how some lighting is back here. He gets a little faded on his wing because it's a little further back. Mm -hmm. Very nicely done. Yeah. Wow, wow. That was by Bob. Where's my mouse? There it is. All right, one more, I believe. I'll refresh, though, to make sure. This is by Rachel Rice. We see all of our images. I love when you lay it out mm -hmm, like this. Mm -hmm. You can even see how she created this cool energy orb, where she got the lightning from. Cool, so if we're just looking at yeah, the I'm composition. Yeah, I'm trying to block out. Mm -hmm. It's so good to see it, and then also like I want to block it out mm -hmm. in my brain. Because uh, the, the orb is, like right now, it, the orb feels so central, but it's really quite high on the composition, yep. and it's yep. very chromatic, so it's like contrast and chroma, it's like pulling my eye up, mm -hmm. which is nice, because she's literally being pulled up, uh -huh. so I guess it's like lifting everything. Yeah, and her arms create this pyramid that just points you straight with her mm -hmm. chin being the tip. Very cool. I wonder if the cropping here could be a little bit different, like less on the bottom and adding a little bit on top. Yeah, like around. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Maybe not, who knows? Yeah, or maybe move everything up and crop the circle. A yeah. Little. Oh yeah, that's true. We're back to tangents. I know. It's not a tangent, but maybe a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. Like. Very nitpicky. Very, there's a slight glow yeah. on her that shows like the energy. Reflecting down, mm -hmm. maybe? Or, or maybe she's like emanating the power from her. I want the backstory. Where's the fan fiction backstory yes. document that we asked you all to attack? I'm Post just it in chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send us the link. It's really cool. Nice job, Rachel. Photos from Pexels. Thank you for posting your source. That's nice. great. Cool. So those are all the submissions from this stream. But don't forget, we have one more stream happening after this where you can post your updates or new submissions, and they'll be going over them. And then we'll pick one winner at the end of the day that we will notify on Behance and show their work tomorrow. Very cool. Yeah, Ashi, I agree. It's a nice image. So we have a little uh, over 10 minutes left before we're going to skedaddle on out of here. Uh, maybe you can kind of wrap up what you're going to be working on today, and then we can talk about yeah. her thing. Yeah. So, I mean, we kind of got to a point similar to yesterday, which is good with yeah. pacing. We're like, there's still little nitpicky things still to fix, like masks and a bit of mm -hmm. adjustment. But I think we got something nice compositionally. Yeah. Um, and even the rough the rough value change on that one is not perfect yet, but it's pretty dang good, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's more believable. For doing the simplest little tiny adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I we can, I have the, this is where we started. Oh, <laughs> it's cropped out. Oh my gosh. And then this lovely gem. Wow. <laughs> That's. A, I wanna look through all of your layers, like if you turn them. Yeah, so we have, these are all my pearls. Whoa. And they are all over. Whoa. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, these are like in little segments of yes. ones and twos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy that you only had three of those white balls. Yes. And it looks like you had millions. Yeah, we got, and it, it, there's some there's some smart overlapping, but mm -hmm. mostly it was just like little pairs of twos everywhere. Yeah. So right. we got those, and then we've got, these are the ones that came with it. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that it only had those three in yeah. there. The front piece here. Cool. The adjusted angle there. Yeah, you're using a little Bring bit of warping. Up. Yeah, we warped that, and then I think we've got another, who is this? <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's just hanging out. Oh, it's the uh, slight adjustment there. Uh -huh. The most nitpicky adjustment. <laughs> yes, it's like a pixel. <laughs> But nice. I think I think if I had more time, I would go back and make this come all the way down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah. Whoa. So Whoa. There's been a lot of editing. This is art, guys. Like, look how it's like a deconstructed, brutalist design. Oh, and yeah. um, print it. We're done. And throw some Bauhaus in there, <laughs> yeah. and you're golden. I'm so edgy. <laughs> Literally. Um, <laughs> it's so strange to look at it all like that, taken apart. I mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. um, 
-hmm. really makes you appreciate where you've been, yeah. where you're going. And then this little guy here, which I think um, I'll write a fan fiction about what this symbolizes. <laughs> A fan fiction about my gloves, <laughs> about chapter my gloves. one. <laughs> it's been a lonely day, yeah. said Purple Gumball. Wow, they're personified. I like it there. Oh, yeah, totally. That's, that's good. I mean, isn't it all supposed to be personified? I Aren't mean, we all? Yeah. <laughs> so I've got this baby little green edge that I'll oh, yeah. take out at some point. Cool. Awesome. And then what do you think you're going to be doing tomorrow? Mm. So we have this, we have two compositions. We have this guy mm -hmm. and we have... Organized, nice. I mean, I was like, please be in the folder that <laughs> I said it was gonna be in. Oh, that's a big file. Let's not look at that. <laughs> we got this guy. Oh, so cool. We got this guy. Yes. And I think tomorrow we can start maybe by putting these into a post and mm -hmm. playing with their scale and uh, composition there. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, I kind of want to start uh, working with these. I yes. think there's some sort of weird sea creature that's maybe holding a bunch of these weird floating shapes. Oh, I'm interested to see how this metallic uh, fabric comes into play. Right? And if I, we're going to have to edit the lighting on it at all. We probably will. Darn. <laughs> Especially if you change the color of the background like you yeah. have. <laughs> It's just so interesting as a as like a, a material. Mm-hmm. I can tell by your face. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's stop that. We don't yeah. need to look there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. So that's game plan, I think. Awesome. Yeah. I'm interested about this uh, purple choice that you made. Will you turn off that purple background layer again? Mm-hmm. Cool. It's monochromatic, but I think it matches with the kind of primary color scheme you did yesterday. Like simple, effective, visually strong. Yeah, because we could, I was thinking about contrasting um, mm -hmm. and doing something a little different, but it feels like it's working. Mm -hmm. um, let me see, let's look in here. You copied it, just to be sure. Just to remember the number. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know, it could be like a, some sort of a tealy color here, yeah. but. Let's go back to that kind of peach color that we were at yesterday. The millennials will love it. <laughs> Millennial pink. Our radars just up. like go off like, what? Pink? But yeah, I just, I keep getting super into the purple, so. Mm -hmm. It's a confident choice. That's I love where it. where I think we are. Nice, and you said and that after we finish everything, you're gonna tweak some things and then upload to Behance. Yeah, possibly. I'd like to. Uh, I think there's gonna be three posts on Behance, like three images mm -hmm. finished, and maybe in context we could do something, mm -hmm. or or maybe there's a fourth piece. I think I like using little additions. It's like textures in the background, especially if it's something mm. so simple. So mm. maybe it's like a pattern of the other images I have, because I have so many images in yeah. that drive. Um, yeah, why not use them? Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's like background textures or additional things. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking about how it sits in that long scroll could be cool. Cool, yeah. Before we end, we have just a couple minutes left. I want to take another peek at your portfolio. Yeah. Uh, this time specifically your Behance, because there's a little more maybe more of John here. Yeah. Um, what project do you feel here is the project that you're most invested in personally? Ooh, that, that's a hard question and I'm gonna pivot and okay. answer a different question. Fair, fair. Uh, I think some of the stuff that I would do if I didn't have clients to work on mm -hmm. would be like the Oh Lord Jesus uh, match I saw piece. this, so cool. This I just did in my apartment um, with matches and super glue. Uh, I was trying to do like a <laughs> meme series. Yeah. Uh, and this was the Oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire, oh, sweet brown Jesus. meme. Yeah. Um, and I love how messy, like it got, it's super messy, but like in a beautiful way. Yes. So capturing like what that looked like. Oh. And then I lit it and almost burnt down my apartment. And you and your fumes and your flames. <laughs> know, oh right? Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I, as like an artifact, mm -hmm. I just, it makes me happy every time I see it. Even though it's kind of old, it still, it still brings yeah. me joy. I love that you have this in your portfolio. Like, no client, you're the client. I'm just doing something that makes me laugh. This, and when I, when I, um, I worked at Interbrand for three years, which is big corporate branding. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot there. In my interview, they loved this piece. And oh. it's like the opposite of, an inner brand project. Like you said, mm -hmm. there's no client, it's just kind of an experiment. 
Um, and that's not at all what we did there because we worked for like banks and hotels. Mm -hmm. um, but they really liked this and it's kind of that 20 to 30% in your portfolio that shows your personality, I would oh, say. Okay. Um, I don't have it on my site anymore because it's a little older. Yeah. Uh, but I still reference it and bring it up yeah, quite a bit. you still stand behind it. Yeah. So you said 20 to 30% that shows your personality. Yeah. Like, and then... And then always, always start with like the type of work you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's always good to have fun stuff. The We Me poster too is something on my portfolio now yeah. that I have on my site that is like, it's a real thing I did at Interbrand for um, new hires, but it's like very personality driven. Yeah. We had, we printed these welcome posters for every new hire cool. and we would like bitmap the portrait they gave us and then their manager would Sharpie and, and marker on top of it. That's so interesting. So it was really fun and this was like, design, but also mm -hmm. like system design, because we actually had to print these and I had to print one for every new hire and then give it to the manager and have them do it. Kendall. That's my friend Kendall, who's mm. done one of these before. Yes. <laughs> we worked together there. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, so this actually was implemented uh, and for a while people made them. Uh, and I, I like system design too, like in real world, like how's this gonna work? How mm -hmm. do you fold it? Who's gonna give it to who? Yes. Is it something people are gonna like spend the time to actually engage with? Yeah, that's so interesting that design is not literally just the pixels or the ink that you have on the poster. Yeah. It's like the entire thing, the entire experience. Yeah, who's gonna use it and how? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you really have to learn how to think about that. And we were talking yesterday about how that is something that art school was good at teaching, uh, not just technique, but like how to think about design yeah. and, and systems and the experience. And I was gonna contrast this project with what you actually have on your portfolio. Do you lay these out differently or are they pretty similar? Um, I think it's pretty similar. So mm -hmm. when I when I first did it, I was designing this to be on like an all black yeah. Behance thing. So, mm -hmm. so the image down here like is edge to edge. Yeah. And then everything else sits in like a black fill. Yes. Uh, and for a while I had a black background on my portfolio, uh -huh. but it changed to white and I, I tweaked a little bit like the spacing because like that white line in between stuff mm -hmm. um, changes the flow and yeah. like what is the pixel height there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it, this image too may have been resized just to sit with a better, yeah. a better border because yeah. it, it really does change the view. Mm -hmm. um, but I think building building things like as these big chunks, it's pretty adaptable to different yeah. formats. Especially for this project, like the main colors are a very light value, either like this pink or this white, and then there's black. So having a black background and that some of this stuff really works well with the white background mm -hmm. because there are these large black pieces of graphic. And thinking about like the color things sit on and the value things mm -hmm. sit on is important because like even beautiful work will be ignored if it's not like presented properly. Totally. So, um, you know, like what you're, or like the Gulfstream one I had is like on a dark blue and having a dark value was intentional so that the light blue would pop. Yeah. You know, like that light blue business card on a white background, you might not care about mm -hmm. it as much or see it. Mm -hmm. um, so like thinking about those decisions is important. That's so nice. Someone says, Kendall. Yes, Andre, <laughs> that is Kendall. And Elsa's inner brand is huge. It's real big. <laughs> real, real, real big. Yeah, I'm at a very, a very different company now in yeah. terms of scale. But I think it's good too to have like, have both of those experience where mm -hmm. I worked with giant uh, agencies and then pretty small agencies. Right, right. And what they can afford versus like what you can give them. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to solve those problems too, because you still want to give everyone something amazing that you could put your name behind. No matter Absolutely. what the budget is. Very awesome. I'm wondering if this blue, does it have to do with like the sky? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's actually a, a like a legacy color from their oh, earlier brand. It feels very retro too. Yeah. I, it was, I kind of wanted to lean into that, mm -hmm. into that vibe, kind of with the geometry we we're doing. Yeah. The darker colors are, are new additions so Got that we you. pair them together. Mm -hmm. But um, it's also nice, like look what a brand has and like what you can carry over that has value, but yeah. then like make it feel better, uh, more yeah. more modern, or, you know, like a contemporary retro vibe is still like a fresh vibe yes. to it, fresh feel mm -hmm. to it. Still clean. Or even that comp, like having the shirt all gray, mm -hmm. so that like we're in a monochromatic world, uh, like yes. intention, like decisions like that. I think yeah. that was like a blue shirt and it's like, no, desaturate it. Cause like, this is a very oh. blue monochromatic world mm -hmm. intentionally. Mm -hmm. But like a slightly grayish blue background. Yeah. 
All right, so if you want to follow more of John's work, you can check out his portfolio, hellojohnolson.com, or check him out on Instagram. And we'll be back tomorrow yeah. for the last day to work on these awesome glove compositions. Right now we've got Paul and Life of Avax coming up next, so we'll be back in about five minutes. Stay tuned, everyone. Bye. See ya. Thank you.